Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I'm a big fan of fedora hats. I always look forward to seeing what new hat projects are in the works. But lately, I've been seeing so many hat projects get cancelled left and right. And every time I see it, it just leaves me feeling heartbroken. Somebody needs to stand up for the rights of fedora hats. The animation industry is quite a great medium for unique and engaging stories. Animation can create some of the most distinct and awe-inspiring universes of all time. Animated worlds are what makes these programs as good as they are because they are so much more creative and charming compared to if they were actually only filmed with actual actors. They're worlds of escapism, which you won't see just by leaving the house. So many of our favorite animated movies and TV shows of all time wouldn't stick out or be remembered as fondly as they are if they weren't made using animation. Say what you will about Toy Story 4, but everybody would hate that movie to no end if it was live action, regardless of its quality. Those animated projects will for sure stick with you and whether they age well or not, it's always still fun for kids to look back on their favorite animated projects when they get older, even if it's only for nostalgia. For that alone, animation should be respected for telling some of the greatest stories of all time and can still do that in the modern day. Yeah, unfortunately, in the last couple years or so, the animation industry just can't seem to catch a break. Animation projects on Netflix and HBO Max being cancelled before the creators can even pitch them to the CEOs, classic animated franchises being rebooted as live action versions, and higher ups f***ing lying by saying people don't respect animation at all. Yeah, well guess what, animation projects don't respect those people. It honestly makes me feel sad to see animation having such a hard time, so I'm going to stick up for the animation industry and show that it's so much more than what these people think it is, and talk about how ridiculous it is that all these poor animation projects are being cancelled. Let's start off with the more offensive part, saying animation isn't respected. I have no idea where this came from, but it's almost as if some kind of stigma emerged that animation is only for kids. I personally think that's ridiculous, and it baffles me who could have possibly said this. Ah, so that's what the devil looks like. Former Disney CEO Bob Chappick stated that he felt that children will probably be into animation when they're at their current age, but probably won't have the desire to come back and watch it when they get older and they want something for them. That basically translates to, animation is for kids and kids are stupid, who cares about animation? Yes, there are animated shows that are specifically made for kids like Dora the Explorer and Paw Patrol, but even in the modern age there are some animated shows specifically for adults like Bob's Burger and Rick and Morty. Even though Chappick made that statement, he clearly doesn't know what company he was working for. Walt Disney Animation Studios helped to popularize animation as a medium in the first place. In terms of kids wanting something for them when they get older, there are so many kids out there who will say that something that they want for themselves is some kind of animated program, whether it's a show or a movie. Hell, companies like Pixar know that animation can appeal to all ages, and Pixar is also a huge part of Disney's brand, which Chappick clearly didn't know. They make their movies with that parents taking their children to the movie theaters in mind. Most of them. The stories they can make appeal to kids and adults alike. Their first 11 films or so do it perfectly. Toy Story appeals to kids because of their toys talking on the big screen, and the adults watching can relate to the moral about change being inevitable. Kids like Monsters, Inc. because of the funny looking talking creatures, and adults can relate to how Sully grows emotionally attached to Boo as if she's a child he never had, and wants to protect her from his rootless boss. Kids like Finding Nemo because of the colorful talking fish, and the adults relate to the emotions Marlin goes through when he witnesses his own child Nemo get kidnapped in front of his own eyes. Hell, Pixar can still successfully create movies like that in the modern age. Look at Cars 3. It's another Cars movie, but the story of this film is about Lightning McQueen trying to keep his racing career alive when he starts to become the slowest race car on the track. When the race day comes, he forfeits the race and enters his trainer, Crew Ramirez, into the race so she can fulfill her dream of becoming a racer. This is a story where somebody gets older and learns to accept the fact that they have become old and to find a new purpose in life. A story like that feels like it could have come out before Cars 2, and it would probably fit right in if it did. Companies like Cartoon Network have had some of the most beloved animated shows of all time, like Scooby-Doo, The Amazing World of Gumball, Steven Universe, etc. Most of Nickelodeon's biggest successes have been animated shows. Yeah, yeah, Spongebob has taken over the network and they are disrespecting the original creator's legacy with a lot of spin-off projects. I get it. 
But their first majorly popular show was The Rugrats, and it was one of the first three original Nicktoons ever made. The Fairly Odd Parents was also another wildly popular show, and it lasted for 16 years. And The Loud House, whether or not that's truly good, was their most popular animated property in recent memory. A lot of their old cartoons have massive fan bases to this day. Like Jimmy Neutron, Danny Phantom, Rocket Power, Invader Zim, Ren and Stimpy, My Life as a Teenage Robot, etc. When the fans who watched them as kids went back and rewatched them, they still like those shows to this day because they were quality shows that all felt inspired in some way. Many people took issues with Bob Chappick's statement and it's just going to make animation as a medium harder for people to really get into, no matter if it's people who want to be animators when they grow up or just for the audience watching. And this kind of statement just makes even more decisions that would just hurt Disney. Of course, not all of these decisions are made because of Chappick's statement, but even before he said this, TV and streaming companies just make baffling decisions when it comes to their beloved properties. For example, Nickelodeon just can't help themselves and keep rebooting everything, and a lot of their reboots are just abysmal. They rebooted Rugrats and the Fairly Odd Parents in the same decade. The Rugrats was animated, but the Fairly Odd Parents received a live action reboot, Fairly Otter, which is one of the worst shows they ever created, whether it was original or not. You're telling me the Super Mario animated movie from 2023 was allowed to be animated while the Little Mermaid revival movie releasing the same year had to be live action? It's just baffling to me why some of these decisions are made when they would all clearly work so much better if they were just animated. There are animated shows that are getting shit on, but people don't hate certain animated shows because they're animated. Velma is hated because of how it delved into sensitive topics that provoked criticism. Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show are hated because... Well, the shows are horrible, but Steven Hillenberg didn't want spin-offs, and Spongebob spin-offs weren't announced in any way until three months after he passed away, which makes it seem like Nickelodeon intentionally waited for Hillenberg to die before creating spin-offs. Thankfully, after Chappick made this statement, he was fired and replaced with Bob Iger, who made the decisions for Disney to acquire Pixar and Marvel, which both clearly worked out for them. He's only CEO temporarily, but clearly Iger doesn't disrespect animation, and Chappick definitely got his comeuppance for his statement disrespecting an entire media. And now that I've shown that animation can indeed appeal to all ages, it's time to discuss the other major giant, Netflix. In 2022, Phil Ryder, director of the Creative Leadership and Development and Original Animation for Netflix, and several people who worked for him were all let go from the company. And after that, Netflix said they wanted their animated projects to be like the boss baby and bring in the numbers like that is. <sighs> That is something I never thought I would hear coming from the giant in streaming services. It's also literally the same thing as Nickelodeon canceling any TV series that doesn't instantly bring in the same ratings as Spongebob does. Netflix doesn't even own the rights to the In Charge Infant. For example, let's talk about the Bone Comics. The Bone Comics tell stories of mystery, romance, and adventure. In 2019, there were plans for Netflix to create an animated adaption of those comics. Lots of people were looking forward to this. While I can't say I've heard about either of those things, I'm happy that the fans get to see what they wanted to see. But when this news was released to the public, the Bones adaptation was quickly cancelled. And of course, that's not the only show being cancelled after a ton of money was poured into them. We got Inside Out, The City of Ghosts, Centaur World, and so many more that I didn't mention. Netflix has lost a ton of subscribers over the past few years, but that's clearly because of their decisions to cancel their own original animated projects that clearly weren't even given a proper chance or resources to actually do well. Even if they don't think those projects are going to do well, there was already a shit ton of money spent on them, they might as well just release those projects for the hell of it. And if you thought streaming services are bad in their current state, listen to this. HBO Max, yeah, three letters and a boy's name. HBO Max and whatever the f Discovery Plus is are merging to form a new streaming service, and that just means more animation projects like Scoob Holiday Hunt, which was almost finished, has also been cancelled. But it gets worse. Of course it does. During a call with Warner Bros. Discovery, it was revealed that they would be cutting kids and animated content across both their streaming and linear services without an adequate investment case against them. Investment case? What law do these animated shows break? 
No, not really. But seriously, the fact that these shows that people are working hard on and spending money on are being cancelled for basically no reason that could possibly come with an adequate reason, I would never support a company that does that. People work hard on animated projects, and if the only way people will be able to see it is a streaming service, but then they get cancelled when season 1 is almost done, that's a hell of a lot of money that's being wasted. If this really is how animation is being treated these days, they might as well do the unthinkable like cancel the main Spongebob show, or make Pixar, the company known for their amazing animated movies, and Cars 2 and Lightyear, only make live action from now on. Animation projects, I'd argue, take more time and money to produce than a live action production. A standard 11 minute episode of Spongebob is probably harder and more expensive to work on than just a normal episode of Victorious. People are leaving linear TV for streaming services, that's just the natural wrong direction society is going in. That's why Cartoon Network has lost a lot of viewers, not because of their animated shows, now Nickelodeon on the other hand, there's many more reasons as to why they're losing viewers, but the audience moving to streaming services is the biggest reason of course. Speaking of Nickelodeon, they have stated that they plan on fighting for the rights to animation. That is honestly super nice to hear, but from what I've heard, it doesn't seem like they're really making an effort to do that. I've heard about way more live action shows than cartoons that they've done recently, and most of the new cartoons they have done are just reboots of old shows or Spongebob spin-off projects. However, there is this upcoming Rock Paper Scissors cartoon which actually looks original for once. While I can't say this will be good or bad based on what I've heard, I'm so happy to see original animated programs be given a spotlight for once. I just hope Nickelodeon will wise up and start actually letting their new animated shows go on for longer than two seasons, even if they aren't as good as Spongebob. The Loud House lasting as long as it has is honestly a miracle at this day and age. Original animated shows deserve way more spotlight than Spongebob's spin-offs in my opinion. Honestly, if the only hope we have for animated shows these days is indie animation, then I will be supporting that heavily. Animation is a medium that deserves as much respect and recognition as possible, and new projects deserve to get attention and praise, except if they turn out bad. I could go on and on about this, but I think that no matter what I say, I won't be able to describe the true appeal of animation better than what Walt Disney said. I do not make films primarily for children. I make them for the child in all of us, whether we be 6 or 60. I don't think there's anybody who understood the true audience of animation better than Walt Disney, and I can only hope that things will get better for the animation industry as a whole moving forward. I hope I was able to get the word across with how the animation industry should be given more respect and exposure. If my words manage to reach a single person who can make a difference for the better in the way animation is treated, then it'll all have been worth it. And if companies don't listen, then I'm even more scared for the future of society. But I guess for now, all we can do is just wait and hope that things will shape up in the near future. But seriously, why has nobody ever stood up for the rights of fedora hats? Why am I like the only person who's ever done that?